What a wild few days in financial markets. In today's video, what I want to do is I want to react to meet Kevin selling his $20 million stock in crypto portfolio. I want to give a little bit of Graham Stephan's reaction, his close friend, and um, basically show I'm in agreement essentially with what Graham Stephan says, uh, why I'm in agreement. And then to finish out the video, I'm going to do a quick portfolio check uh, overview, kind of where I am uh, in this market correction, this market sell off. Uh, so for those of you watching, meet Kevin, if you don't know who he is, is a uh, well-known financial blogger, YouTuber. Uh, I've enjoyed his content over the years. Uh, I think he did a, an interview with Ben Mala a while back. Uh, he does some stock uh, instructional courses, uh, big real estate investor as well. I think he had also a feud with, with Grant Cardone a while back, which was a little crazy, um, back, back then, but, uh, but interesting guy, uh, enjoy his content. And, uh, he, I think at some point had a $32 million portfolio, um, which sold off and, uh, was at 20 million. Now, from my understanding, a lot of his portfolio is very tech heavy, very Kathy Wood-esque IPO, West Coasty, if you will. Um, again, very tech, very concentrated there. And if I were in his position, um, I would have done, first of all, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have owned those things to start off. I wouldn't own things like Roku, Roblox, you know, a lot of Tesla, uh, just a lot of tech, 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 IPO, change the world kind of stocks, uh, growth stocks, just not my cup of tea. But if I did have a, a major concentration, say I was gambling a little bit, some of those stocks and they appreciated up and I had a big holding, I would have made his decision and uh, I would have sold off and then just either gone to cash for a little bit or gone right into index funds to take some of the risk off, um, especially with a portfolio of that size. That's not his plan, though. His plan's a little different, which is interesting, um, which you know, I'm going to play a little bit here. So let's just get into his video just to give a little snippet. Um, the first part of it, he's really kind of going into his macro thesis as to why he's selling, uh, breaking it down from different periods and just giving you his whole uh, thought process, which is kind of interesting. And then uh, let's bring my screen down a little bit here. And then we're going to go, we're going to play out a minute of this. The sinking phase yet. And we're certainly not at the rescue phase yet. That's just my belief. And so I'm making a, an outsized bet on this. I believe this creates an opportunity for me to lower my risk uh, and exposure to the market and to time a better result. Now, this could be very stupid because, again, we know that time in the market beats timing the market. We know that it's much safer to DCA, but when you're exposed 100% to higher valuation tech companies, you might consider taking a more protective approach, especially if you're also exposed to margin. So there you go. He had a little bit of margin and, and to his own point, I mean, he concedes it there. He has a, a big exposure to higher growth tech companies. Um, you know, he's not buying uh, all state. Unim Group, uh, MetLife, Prudential, PNC, you know, single digit P companies. He's confessing essentially that that's what he uh, has owned. And so it would make sense to, to take some risk off. And especially if you have other cash needs coming up. But the most important bottom line out of all of this is I expect more fear to get priced into this market between January 25th and March 16th. And so I plan to re-enter the market very suddenly. I'm going to very suddenly buy right back in with a balance of short-term call options and share purchases, all of which will be available to members of the Stocks and Psychology Money Course. So I will be spending money on put contracts over the next few weeks, and I will be spending money buying back into this market over the next 60 days. I'm taking the entire portfolio and I'm trading it, which is extremely risky. And I don't advise anybody to do it. But if you want to know every single fart that I make with that $20 million, use that link down below. So there you go. He, he really has an interesting uh, idea, which is he, he's selling now, but it's not like, you know, there's certain people on Seeking Alpha, you're writing articles like now's the time to be in cash for the next seven years, right? So there are people that are like 
selling, going to cash and be like, uh, you know, and I just did a video about it, Jeremy Grantham and, and others who predict these, you know, Kiyosaki's one also just the next crash is going to arrival in 1929. It's the end of the world. Go to cash. Uh, it's a massive bubble that's about to pop. He's saying, you know, he has a lot of concentrated risk uh, because of his holdings and a little bit of margin. He's taking some of that off, but he's planning to get back in the market within the next 30 to 60 days, which is which is interesting. So he's really doing some market timing. And, you know, and, and to his point there, he says also, you know, market timing generally doesn't work. But there are people that have made outsized fortunes by making very concentrated market time and bets. It's what a lot of a lot of hedge funds do. It's what George Soros did uh, with the pound. Um, you know, they're making big, bold bets and they win those bets sometimes. I mean, you think of, you know, Carl Icahn here um, with Herbalife, you know, saying it wasn't uh, a, a big Ponzi scheme like Ackman did. Icon won, Ackman lost. Ackman made a bet that didn't work out that it was, and he was shorting it. And so that was a bet that didn't work out for him. And Icon on the other side made a bunch of money. So, you, you know, when you're doing these things, it, it could work wonderf wonderfully for him. I guess, you know, time will tell, but it's a unique uh, idea that he's doing. Um, and so then let's come over here to Graham Stephan. And, um, you know, Graham really kind of makes the point that, that I'm making and that, that I um, feel on the subject. That is, if you were in index funds or value stocks, I don't know if, if selling all 20 million might be the best thing, um, to be frank. But I'll let Graham Stephan speak here. His viewers who see him as a soundboard for simply just buying the dip. But the issue is that there's so much nuance when it comes to investing that no two people are going to be the same. If Kevin was all in index funds, for example, and then decided to sell everything, I would say that would be a very foolish decision that's no different than gambling. But when he has life-changing money, highly concentrated in a few very volatile companies, I do think that it was somewhat smart to rotate out and hopefully invest in a more diversified portfolio of index funds, even though probably he's not going to do that at all. We'll see. So in terms of what I'm doing about this, here's what you should know. First, let's talk about the market. As of today, the S&P 500 officially... So he goes on to talk about his own investments. And I think, again, it's much more strategic with what Graham Stephan is doing versus uh, Meet Kevin. And he kind of says there that it's interesting. He doesn't think that Meet Kevin is going to sell uh, and then get back into index funds as a way to diversify his, his net worth. And you know, I think oftentimes here of Charlie Munger, who says you only need to get rich once. And it's sort of what, what Graham Stephan is saying with $20 million uh, diversified in, in sort of vanilla index funds and some of the real estate holdings that both of them have. It, it, it really, at this point, you're, you're trying to not blow up and not go broke uh, as opposed to get to that $100 million, uh, in a way. You know, because you have life changing money. If you, if you manage this money well, you'll never have to do anything uh, again. Plus, they have very successful YouTube uh, channels and real estate for the income element. So um, so there you go on Graham Stephan. And just, you know, again, with what Meet Kevin has, it's just not my cup of tea. Um, I'm very much into the vanilla index funds as well as value stocks. I'm going to pull up fast graphs before I do my own little portfolio here. And I talked about Goldman Sachs the other day when uh, I did the video on Jeremy Grantham and, you know, just showing Goldman versus some growth. So here you see Goldman trading at a normal, or see a blended PE of 5.9 single digit PA, PE. You know, it's normal PE is 12, so it's trading at half of its PE. It's paying a nice dividend, 2.33. If me, Kevin, had owned a bunch of Goldman Sachs's, so to speak, meaning a bunch of stocks in this position, um, you know, we can look at Allstate, we can look at Unum Group, but I'll, I'll just actually pull up Unum just as another example. Like if you owned a bunch of Allstate, excuse me, uh, yeah, Allstate, Goldman, Unum with some index funds, um, I think he'd be well positioned. And I think the larger point, too, to make is in a big market sell-off, when you own things like this, you're going to be less worried. Why is that? Well, I mean, let's just take Unum that's loaded now. It's blended PE is 
its normal PE is 9.05, okay? Fair market is 15, generally. So again, in a market sell-off, you know, is, is it gonna sell off and start trading at three or four times earnings? Well, that means it's 4.68 dividend yield is gonna increase in the market sell-off. So now let's say you're getting a 5% dividend and something's trading at two or three times earnings. So you're gonna get that dividend, buy more shares with it. So you're buying undervalued uh, stock essentially with it. And then when the market comes out of its correction or recession uh, or bear market, you're gonna compound, you know, you're really gonna pivot out of it. So again, if Meet Kevin had, had Unum's, Goldman Sachs, things like that. But from my understanding, he has a lot, a lot more like Kathy Wood, like uh, let's just take Roblox and Roku, just two examples of Kathy Wood type of stocks. Um, you know, it's, uh, let's see what it's, normal PE ratio. Yeah, it's showing, God, it's showing a negative, Point, negative 86 price to earnings, normal P zero. I mean, I think it's just so uh, such of a growth stock here that um, it doesn't even have like great data, like earnings per share is negative. Uh, let's take Roku and let's see what shows up on, on Fastgrass here. Roku. Okay. So, I mean, this just gives you an example. It's blended P right now is a hundred, it's crazy, you know, I mean, hundred times, it's normal PE ratio is 146 times. Um, so again, if you're owning things trading at a hundred times earnings, 146 times earnings versus I'm owning things that are trading at six times earnings that pay a dividend, you know, why, why would I want to sell that? Now, if I own this, I'd, I'd want to get the heck out of here and realize some profits, you know, again, I'm just not built as a growth investor and you'll see that, most people, especially millennials, especially young people, um, generally uh, are wired as, as IPO, growth, tech, glamour stocks. I'm sort of an anomaly with my um, value investing. Um, but let's, let's finish out the video here. I wanted to just kind of showcase where my three main accounts are today, um, just to kind of give you a sense. Um, I'm in about, probably about 1.1 million in the Manios compounding machine um, down from 1.28. So, you know, I'm down uh, maybe 160,000, 170, 180, somewhere in there from its peak. Um, and uh, so we have TD Ameritrade account here, uh, 584,688. And let's go over now to, let's go over to Interactive. We are at 352.661. And then let's go to Alpaca. And you can see Alpaca here. Let's, let's, this is today. Um, this is where all my composer funds are running. Um, so if you take where I am this year, you can see the peak in, in my funds here is 155. I'm down to 131 right now. Um, you know, so that's, uh, you know, 20,000 or so, but let's do 131, 302, so a million 68. And I have a, some smaller accounts. I have about 30,000. So again, this is an exact, uh, but it's about a million 98,000. So yeah, about 1.1 million. Um, so, you know, I'm not panicking, uh, because I know what, what I own, um, to be frank, you know, so I'm not owning, I'm not owning a, a bunch of Roblox or Roku's. Uh, I'm running a bunch of all states, MetLife, Goldman Sachs, things of that nature. Um, Gazprom is another value stock though. We, we have a geopolitical risk now with Russia. Um, but anyway, so that's, that's pretty much it for today. Just want to do a shorter video, quick little video, middle of the afternoon here. Actually just came in from gardening. Uh, wanted to show these off. Uh, this right here is my Cherokee purple tomatoes, which some people say are the best tasting tomatoes in the world. Um, great for tomato sandwiches, which is really popular in the South, you know, with the bread, the mayo, salt and pepper. I've had that with some friends, uh, very enjoyable. 
So uh, actually before this video, I was out in the garden picking some tomatoes today. Uh, good thing to do on a big, big market sell off is get into the garden, clear your head a little bit, develop your strategy, get some deep thinking in. Uh, it's kind of like meditation or yoga for other people. But um, anyway, you guys, that's pretty much it for today. Let me know your thoughts on meet Kevin, Graham, Stefan, you know, how they're do navigating this sell off um, and sort of what I'm doing, which is adding to more value as stocks throughout. Um, anyways, guys, take care. Ciao.